Shalom Aleichem, Baruch Atah Adinoi, Leheinu Malach HaOlam, Shehakal Nia B'Dvarim. You know, this week, this weekend, people around America and even beyond America are going to be celebrating the uh, Thanksgiving holiday in Jewish law in the Poiskim, in the contemporary codifiers of the modern age, there's a great debate if Thanksgiving should be celebrated by Jewish people, considering that it has uh, religious connotations and connections, which could be considered perhaps uh, that which doesn't belong in the Jewish home, and even considered idolatry. There are many Jewish codifiers that hold that it's okay as long as we don't associate it with any other religious connection. Others say, no, that since essentially it had a um, powerful religious connection, that we should uh, not celebrate it in our homes. As a child, uh, we didn't grow up with Thanksgiving. Uh, it was always nice to see all the pretty decorations and uh, everyone loves turkey, and there's nothing wrong with eating turkey, and there's nothing wrong with cranberry sauce or stuffing or all the wonderful food that you eat. There's nothing wrong with gathering together with family and friends and having a beautiful evening or a beautiful breakfast or whatever it is that you prefer to celebrate. If you have off of work, <laughs> kids are out of school, get together, enjoy, celebrate life, unite, and uh, to be grateful. But you know, the Baal Shem Tov teaches us that everything that a person sees and hears is meant to teach him a lesson in life. And uh, this means that even if you don't celebrate the holiday of Thanksgiving, uh, the idea of Thanksgiving, of being grateful to Da, is something that's very, very profound and very important. We live in a world today where people, children, uh, are getting a lot of things. <laughs> and uh, being grateful and really being happy with what they have is a very challenging task, especially when they have friends that have a lot more than they do. Uh, children tend to desire and to request <laughs> and to want all the wonderful things that the world has to offer. But I think it's important that we educate children from a very young age and ourselves to appreciate everything that we have. I remember when I was a, a kid, nine or ten years old, my father had in his study room a bucket with coins. And in school, uh, during certain years, there was a snack bar open during lunchtime. And the snack bar sold these little uh, orange juice box drinks. The small ones, like the eight ounces, the ones that you could drink in one gulp. And for 40, for 40 cents, you can get one of these little Tropicana orange juice boxes. And we would come up to his room, a few of us, four or five of us, and he'd give us each 40 cents. And he knew that we had orange juice with our lunch. And I remember thinking like, whoa, you know, I, I get so thirsty after my tuna sandwich. I'd love to have two orange juices. But I was grateful because I thought to myself, you know, if I didn't even have 40 cents, I wouldn't even be able to have one. And the days that I got 80 cents, that I got two, was like, phew, so exciting. I remember when we went off to camp, there was a canteen. Everyone knows. So how much money goes into the canteen, that's how much money you could spend every day. So if you'd get $20 for two weeks, you knew you could spend a little bit more than a dollar a day. If you got $40, it's a lot of money. You could spend a lot more on the canteen. And I remember as a child, we always wondered, you know, what if we had more money in the canteen? Well, what if we had more money in the canteen? <laughs> we would have eaten more gumballs and uh, more hot dog gums and uh, more potato chips and more sodas. That's all we would have had. But uh, we learned to value uh, not just every $20 bill, every $10, every dollar, every penny we learned to value. 
Uh, I'm reminded of when my Zaydi Hecht, my father's father, used to tell the story of how he would go to the vendor in front of his school or shul and they would sell chickpeas by the cup for five cents. And it was like huge. Like if you had a nickel to buy a cup of chickpeas, it was like biggest thing. Training children to appreciate everything that they have is really, really monumental. I'm reminded of a story of Ramesha Feinstein because he's one of the great codifiers, contemporary authors of Responsa Today that talks about this holiday of Thanksgiving. And one of the uh, books that brings stories of Rav Moshe, they tell the story of how Rav Moshe used to go to a person, used to tell him thank you. And once the person asked him, Rav Moshe, why do you always tell me thank you? He said, because remember once you did me a favor. So he said, yeah, but that was a while back. He says, yeah, but I, I always appreciate that you did it for me. So every time he would see that person, he would tell him, thank you. Can you imagine you would tell thank you to every person that ever did you a favor? I don't know if Ramosha did it to everyone, but the idea of truly being grateful for something, you see the person again a year later or two years later, you tell him, thank you, by the way, remember when to live in a state of gratitude is something very, very deep, very profound. There's a story told of... Uh, a great uh, scholar, sage who lived in Yerushalayim, they used to take care of plants. And once they asked him, why are you always taking care of plants? He was a Holocaust survivor. He said, because during the Holocaust, I hid behind a bush and that saved my life. So when I came out of Europe, I dedicated myself to taking care of plants because it was the plants that saved my life understand the depth of what it means to be grateful. Very often in life, we're always thinking about what we want, thinking about the future, thinking about what we need, what we like. It's important. You do. You need to think about where you're going. But you also need to think about the present, right here, right now. In English, in modern terms, we call this monotasking. Right now, right here, being present, being mindful. Cup of coffee, make a brocha on it. Make a bracha after you finish drinking it. Piece of cake, piece of chocolate. You're grateful. You're sitting on a comfortable chair. It's not broken. It works. You have a cell phone. A few dollars in your pocket. You get to take a shower with hot water. We take these things for granted. But the truth is, it's all of these things are beautiful. All of these things are things that we should be grateful for. I just want to conclude. Not just being grateful for things from the past, but being grateful for things always and in the future and it's really a matter of attitude it's how you look at the world in the parsha this week there's a pasuk that says we're talking here about the story of Yankov Avinu that he built for himself a home and for the for the cattle for the mikne he built sheds like a sukkah an outside shack so here the Rebbe says what does it mean that he built himself a house? And what's the importance of what he did for the animals? Obviously, he built something for the animals to stay sheltered. But the Rebbe says that for yourself, meaning for your neshama, for that which is most important in life, even the bias, you build a house. For the things that are not so important in life, put it in the garage. Go to the shack, put it in the shed. The mikna things that we acquire in life, those are the small things that are not so important. It just gets a shack. The most important things, that's the things you bring into your house. When we speak about gratefulness and gratitude, you have to ask yourself, truly, what's the most important thing that you have in life? What are the things that are most important to you? What are you grateful for? What are you thankful for? And those have to be the big things in life. The small things that you didn't get or the things that you had and broke or lost, let it go. In the shack, in the shed, in the garage, it's outside. You don't even know what's there. It's in the tubs, it's in the boxes. It's, it's not important. What's important is your neshama, your soul, your service to Hashem, being the best person that you could be, the bias, building yourself up like a home with a foundation strong and sturdy and robust. So I want to say l'chaim to all my family and friends. You should have a beautiful weekend. And uh, we should always be grateful and thankful to the master of the universe for everything that we have, every moment, every breath that we take, every penny that we have, every friend and family member that we get to live our lives with. Chaim.